going to get into the nitty gritty deep stuff. One of the reasons that we came together and one of the reasons we're good friends now, we're going to get into that. And it's not your typical story. When I heard the story, I would have never had that privilege had it not been for the laughter. Amazing. When I heard the story, you were on stage and you left it at a cliffhanger. Mm. <clears throat> and the cliffhanger was, you just left it with, and I didn't make the turn to the left. I didn't mm. go down that cliff. And I was at a Kenny Loggins concert. I don't know if I told you this, but everyone here hasn't heard it. I was at Kenny Loggins, my old friend, who invited me to his Hollywood Bowl. And I was really feeling the prayer that you guys had given me that mm -hmm. day. So I'm in that ethereal, divine yeah. space. Yeah. Just And he literally is doing a song called Peace of Mind. And I felt so peaceful for the first time in a long time. Mm. So I want to tell you, you know, you're telling me how I saved your life. At that moment, when my life was really in danger or difficult, you know, with the divorce and things like that, it was all it was so sudden. It was... A, I was so powerless over things that were happening. You just texted me and said, the reason I didn't drive off the cliff was someone had handed me a cassette of your comedy, and I laughed until I cried, so I made the right instead of the left. Mm. And then you keep telling people I saved your life. Amen. And uh, I want to know, and I teared up. My friend didn't believe me, by the way. I had to show him the text. I talked to him yesterday, as a matter of fact. He told me you were the guest today. And that was a moment for me where... I flashed back mm. to God writing a script that we can't write. Uh, we all think we're bright and stuff. No, you can't write something like this. And I flashed back to fourth grade when I was, um, I told that story about my mom punishing me and I, I watched people laughing and I was in the, another, another place that we lived around people that had money and I was shamed and abused and beaten wedgies i'd sewed my own pants in the in the bathroom and i was caught by a rich kid and it was he sewing his pants and it's uh you know all of that it was just terrible in another house another home another apartment living with someone else whatever it was i was not in a good space mm. and i was in that space of this is just not for me this life is not for me and then that day laughter also lifted me up and sharing my truth and it was amazing you say I, my truth. Just say truth. Hmm? Just say truth. True. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you can't say my truth that two plus, you know, two plus two is three. It, it's just not true. Okay. It, it's true. So give it credit. The truth is, yes. There's truth in the universe. Yeah. And there was truth. And it was, but it, sometimes we don't see the truth or don't, you don't feel the truth. You right. feel like you're living a lie or you're living someone else's life or you're living out the way someone else wants you to be and you're performing and all that kind of stuff yeah. instead of. Wow, this is truth. Yeah, you come to terms with it. Yeah, and I came to terms with it that day. I went, wow, this is powerful, sharing this story that I gave them. It was a painful story of being beaten. and uh, But wow, went from pain to extreme pleasure and connection with the people. The next day, the teacher, Mrs. Stout, she said, he's never going to do this again. And she took me in the closet. She locked me in the closet for a whole day and tied my hands behind my back with blue yarn. I'll never forget how he hogtied me. Mm. She says, you'll think about this. Don't get off that box. And of course, I'm defiant. I kept getting up. <laughs> I look at her thighs coming through the vent. I jump back on the box. She rolled checkered skirt, big thighs. She would come to check on me all day long. She would let me just eat. And then the rest of the day, I spent the entire day in that closet. And that's the day where God spoke to me and said, oh no, she doesn't have you. You're going you're gonna to do this for the rest of your life. You're going to tell jokes. And you're going to make people laugh. You know, when you, when you see these people as monsters and you meet God, you realize how tiny they really are. Yeah, tiny. tiny disappeared. They're, they're gnats on the butt of the Disappeared. Not even that. Yeah. It's just like she's, she's, has, she has, her words had no meaning to it's me. It's irrelevant. The only meaning that had something to say was this ethereal, internal truth that was being spoken to me that said, you continue to make people laugh. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to stop you or try to prevent you from making people laugh and telling your truth. Truth is such an offense to people. It's a fiend to certain people. Well, that's I find that to be the case this day. But let me just say that. Well, the, may, I, the, may, I, may I add this? One, 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 se okay. one second. Sorry. The moment that I had that moment of clarity, that moment where God spoke to me in that 
arena with Kenny singing that, with my old friend singing yeah. Peace of Mind. Yeah. That's what came up for me. Mm. Is you said, you saved my life. And I went, oh, I was saved first. And that's powerful. this was an intervention for me. Mm. And I went, whoa, you could never script that. And I had tears in my eyes. I went, oh my God, that's so powerful. If we step back and allow this power, you know, allow for this power, not have the ego to think that the power is not there, or the ego to think it's not present. And that was it for me. And that's when I bonded with you. I'm, I'm going, this is, this is my guy. And I go, you know, go to your church and I enjoy it. And I bring my kids. And by the way, I want to say one thing. My kids love you. Your kids are precious. My kids love you. These little divine beings themselves, they love you because you tell the truth. Now, like, they're falling asleep half the time and all that because kids do that in church or whatever. But they, you take them back and you give them a little coin and you just you, you take them in because it's God speaking through you. And they need that because they've gone through a difficult divorce and yeah. things like that. They've had this, this tumultuous thing that happened to them that happened out of nowhere. And by the way, they're very bonded together, 14 and 10. Most 14-year-old boys don't hang out with their, their he little looks, sister. Yeah, he looks out for her. Oh, my God. He and is. vice versa. Oh, exactly. Oh, I, I call her his conciliary. I mean, she, <laughs> she like defends him. Dad, he's, he, that's, you know, I'm always wrong. But but it, it's a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of you. And they get it. It doesn't matter that it's church and they don't want to be there necessarily. Yeah. It's that it's you. And you bring that truth to the congregation. You speak, you speak, you speak the word and you say it with no filter. <laughs> Sometimes that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no filter, which I admire. And again, that's what brought me to you to begin with because I had heard you have no filter regarding the mandates and the pandemic and all stuff like that. No filter. I love people without that. And that's what I, just to sum it all up, that's the voice inside of me. In that closet, this little boy, probably eight, nine, ten years old, whatever it is, tied, hogtied from this woman. And people go, how did you survive that? I'll tell you how I survived it because God said, you tell jokes and you make people laugh. You bring joy to people. Bring that light out in people that exists in all of us. She was so miserable. She didn't, she didn't know what laughter was. That teacher. I remember her trying to stop laughing at my story, by yeah. the way, but she couldn't help herself. Yeah, I was yeah. funny. <laughs> well, you know, when you yield to God, you become an instrument to yeah. guide others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and that's what I got out of it. <clears throat> I, I, for years now, I understand that if we tap into this, and again, I hope people that um, might, might be on the fence or even angry when people speak of God and things like that, you know, get angry. I say, just, just, I just say, just open up a little bit. And, and just and, and listen for the core, the core message that might be sent through us through these vehicles. And I'm, it's not an ego thing. It's not like I think I'm greater or you're greater than anyone else. We're, we're just we're just two beggars showing other beggars where the food is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I have, always will thank you. I mean, that was it. We can the, we can argue who can be president of the mutual admiration system. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the most profound, beautiful moments of my life. But what it did was when you sent me that text, it it really confirmed. That I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we need to hear that. Amen. Yeah. I'm not doing a chuckle chatter. It's pointing to the chuckle chatter. He wants me to take you to a chuckle chatter. Let's do it. <laughs> you want to do a chuckle chatter? I have no idea what it is. Oh, really? No. <clears throat> oh, it's where you, like, well, I, maybe I don't. I saw you doing a thing in Napa with a bunch of folks. I, maybe it's in, I don't know. I, I would rather do the machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, I did it. Uh, I did a, ch a guided lavitation. I do both. The lavitation is a little deeper, which you could go deep. But my problem I'm having with it is you don't seem to have any issues. And if you do have issues, you know the answer. And what a chuckle chatter does is it explodes into this space inside. I, I, knew, of I do know what it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, and it brings you to this new yeah. state of consciousness. It's brilliant. But you're already in touch with it. So we'll do it anyway. You know, do, you have, do you have any difficulties in your life? Of course I do, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, what I wanted to jump yeah. in earlier. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I'm not avoiding this. I just okay. it was important for me to add that you're talking about no filter. Uh, growing up, one of my favorite comedians, including my dad, his tremendous gift was like Jonathan Winters. It was just mm. extemporaneous, just a tr just this 
the stream. He was of, the highest level. Oh, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Was and, genius, and I'd watch yeah. him on Johnny Carson, yeah. and then you know, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Right. Like, I'm coming, Mama. You know, I just <laughs> no, that wasn't him. But, no, that was. Stick but he's Sean. driving. He's driving yeah. the, the the pickup truck. Yeah. And and then you know, Robin really, Williams takes from him, and that. Yeah. When when you get into that realm where it's unscripted, the, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's probably scripted to some extent, but and and what fascinating. Is, we're in flow. Yeah. It's just genuine. Yeah. I call it, it genuine energy flow. Yeah, you know, you're that tapped into. Actually, exactly. God is speaking, and and you can feel the people, audience. People don't want to believe that's mm-hmm. what it is, but it's called creativity because it's a creator is speaking. And it's just getting out of the way. How do you cleanse and get out of the way? That's what the chuckle chatter and guided levitation is about. Now, you, you began by asking where in the scriptures okay. is is yes. is humor listed? Where in the humor? I mean, excuse me. Where in the scriptures is uh, chemical engineering? Where in the scriptures is you know algebra? It, it still exists. It's still a, a pursuit of truth, and and I think we just solved the. The, the answer to that question we we showed how through humor our lives have been saved mm. now that that's a that's a gift of god oh of course so and laughter is yeah i think we need more of it um and so, says, is, and so are tears the bible says whatever is pure whatever is lovely you know it, it goes on to say, so meditate on these things and and that humor at its at its most transparent clearest point is pure you just said transparent and yeah, clear. Yeah, that's and, exactly what it is. And, and it's a transparency, and, it's, and, and, and it can place. be lovely. You know, I'm a little disappointed that you don't have a quote from the Bible. I was looking for some because when I do my speeches and when I do my workshops, I want to be able to say, "Hey, and the Bible says it too." And all I've got is Mary. <laughs> that's it. That's a good one. The whole damn Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. From- See, I know my Bible. Yeah, yeah, Matthew, yeah. Mark, Luke, John, yeah, the Acts, yeah, Romans. Good. I was going to call my kid the Acts. I was going to do a bit about that because you know, there's a lot of marks and I got you. and stuff like that. I, I know you got me. I'm ex- it's for other people need you. <laughs> anyway, so chuckle chatter or guided lapidation. Do you have something that's bothering you that's in your way? Like, you know, there's some situations that are, you know, just like stressful. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so here's how it works. Well, I'm going to guide you through this guided lapidation, and you're going to say out loud while you're laughing at the same time, say those things. Okay, say them out loud. I'll start it, but you go along with me. Ready? First, you breathe through your nose. Ha. Ah. By the way, if you ever notice, hallelujah. Yes. Ha, ha is a very spiritual word. It's cleansing. Isn't a lot of spirituality or religion about cleansing? Yeah. You're well, cleansing this darkness. This, this. We are light. We are love. We are levity. We are those things, right? Yeah. G- but God, then the darkness enters. God's personal name is a tetragrammaton. It, they, they're not sure how to pronounce it. It's J. Uh, it's it's uh, they think Yahweh. Yeah. But but the Hebrew sounds of the four consonants is the sound you make when you're a child and you're inhaling your first breath, and the sound you make as an adult when you're dying and you exhale your last last breath. He encompasses the entirety of your life, and even when you're breathing, you're speaking His name. That that's that's the the mm. Jewish understanding. Mm-hmm. It's the rabbis that teach that. So mm. language is critical, and this ha. Ah, I mean, it, it, it universal. It, it, it's universal. It's every single it's like, language. It's has like it. taxi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Just like that. So anyway, so so here we go. Ha! <laughs> Let it a giggle at the end. Ready? Do you see the reflection that takes place? There's all transparency. It's all clean. It's all clear. You're just smiling at me, and I'm smiling at you. It's just a reflection with no no thought because it's contagious. It truly is contagious. All right. Now we're going to speak, laugh, speak. At the same time, I'll talk about something something difficult in my life, and then you're going to go next. There you go. (laughs) You're going to help me with laughter. <laughs> my, my finances took a big, big hit, <laughs> and I have too many kids <laughs> to pay for college. <laughs> I won't be able to afford DeVry Institute at this point. <laughs> You're too poor to pay attention. <laughs> you do your own. I'll do mine. <laughs> Oh, rub a bit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now you tell yours. Here we go. <laughs> I'm so fat. <laughs> when I put on my BVDs, they spell Boulevard. <laughs> I had my body fat measured. They found my car keys. 
<laughs> when I got on a talking scale, they said one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, here we go. And through your nose and <sighs> <sighs> see, endorphins this cranking, endorphins cranking. Yeah. Our blood, our light is shining. That's the thing. When you laugh, your light shines. There's nothing filtering it. There's no thoughts and all these, you know, the negative thoughts that are out there. The darkness. It's like very similar to Star Wars. I don't know if you're into that. I love the mythology love Star of Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's all light and that. Uh, clones. You're my friend forever. Likewise. I appreciate you being on here. That was great. I hope you feel a little better now after I do. that lapitation. Always. I'm going to take you through that on our next walk. What I love about our walks is I challenge you, and you meet the challenges. And I challenge you. Know, you. And I'm, yeah, exactly. And I'm curious. I love being curious. I have yeah, one you, curiosity. You're from curious the, like a cat. That's right. I have one <laughs> curiosity from the other day, okay? I'm, I should just end on a beautiful note like that, but, um, well, and curiosity is beautiful. Hmm. Uh you talked about due process. People haven't had the due process, you know. Sure, you want to go here? Yeah, I do. All right, I do. How? Do oh, I have to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go here. Ooh. All right. The due process that takes place when someone is killed in war. How is that? How do you manage that in your thoughts? So, the the Bible says, "I shall not kill." Mm -hmm. But it actually means I shall not murder. Okay. Um, Augustine said there's justifiable war. Okay. So what happens is, you know, a sovereign nation is invaded. People are raped. Their citizens are killed. And you have the right to defend yourself. Um, and so there's no court of law. There's an immediate response to a threat that's coming at you and your family. And as the scripture says, he who doesn't provide for his family is less of an infidel. That means even protection. You, you come mm. to my house wanting to hurt my family. Right, right. You, you, I will make an immediate let's say assessment. You're at a, let's say you're at a yurt in another country, and another country says, okay, I don't like your country because you invaded my country first. And, of course, you think, oh, no, you invaded me first. There's no due process, and that the children are killed in, that, that's, in their home. That's why, that's why it's so important to continue to speak that you you can have you can have opposing opinions but continue to communicate yes so that you can find commonality and resolve issues but it comes to loggerheads and then you respond with a gun i i i am paranoid not paranoid i'm con greatly concerned that we're going to go to war with with iran my son right now is on a ship in, in the ocean and the likelihood is with his wedding coming up he's going to miss his wedding and be deployed and that's personal to me, mm -hmm. this industrial war complex mm -hmm. that, that we're so willing to put our men and women in harm's way. Mm. And, and, our, our, and our southern border, we're watching fentanyl pour through, and we're killing our own citizens, and we're going to go fight a war for somebody else? That and doesn't it, make any sense. That always bothers me to support the troops. The best way you can support the troops, troops is to have these dialogues, yeah. is to work things out, is to, have <clears throat> is to look at both sides and try to have empathy and, and compassion and so forth. That's the way not to get. And by the way, people Come let us su reason together. support the troops does not mean give more money to the industrial complex, yeah. to the weapons makers. But they're the because largest lobbyists in Washington. Of course. Of course. Them and Big Pharma. Yeah. yeah. We'll end it there. <laughs> We're going to war Because <laughs> FISA Pharma has a way of messing up my DNA <laughs> Let's laugh about it, what the hell Anyway, well, Rob McCoy, how do we find you on, on Instagram, what are you? I think it's rob-mccoy.us Okay, good I don't know, you'll, you'll find go, it you'll, you'll, you'll find it And then our, my website's godspeak.com Godspeak.com. That's right. You'll see me there in the front row. Front row. That's right. <laughs> me and Bob Euchre. So listen, uh, just love having you on here. As a matter of fact, I'd like to have you on again. And it's not a, a, a you know, it's obviously not a typical Hollywood guest and podcast. I told you earlier, I'm in the book of Who's He. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my book, you're a Who's Who. Thanks. And I appreciate you being here. It's still standing up, Craig Shoemaker. Follow me at Official Craig Shoemaker, and also still standing up podcast. And following, listen, we're here for you. This is to be of service to you and to others, whether it's to make you laugh, inspire you, or instigate you, or just uh, teach, guide, all of these things, all to have a shift into another state of being, consciousness, and so on. 
we all go about this path in a different way, and we're here to share all of those paths with you. And we had we had a minister on here. By the way, my mom, wait till she meets him. You're not wearing the collar. You're going to hear it from my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear one when she comes. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I'll see you all next time on Still Standing Up. God bless you all.